Hey, welcome back, everybody. Good Wednesday. Hopefully, we're having an all right middle of the week. And luckily, things remain pretty quiet out there, all things considered. Now, we have uh, kind of gotten into this cold spell through much of the east, but that will not last forever, uh, as I am seeing another kind of warm up on the horizon. Uh, and with that warm up, we do have the potential for a kind of feisty storm system out west that could eventually try to cross the country. And we'll discuss that uh, in today's video. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Like the video uh, and comment. Let me know where you're watching from. I do want to say thank you also to everyone specifically watching this video. Uh, again, when things kind of calm down like this, obviously the views come down, uh, but we've still been getting at least a thousand views here on the regular, so that does mean a lot to me. Uh, and it's good to know that we have a solid foundation on the channel of people that uh, come back, even if things are slow. Uh, that's always kind of, a, kind of a big goal of mine to uh, make this channel something you want to watch whether there's active weather or not. So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and dive on into things because again, uh, not a lot to talk about enough that, uh, you know, we obviously do have a video. So uh, here we go. All right, we're going to start in the tropics. Now, currently tropics, you know, it's relatively active, we'll say for the middle to end of October, um, but uh, not really eyeing any big time threats. Now, a couple areas to watch. We have this one kind of cluster of storms out into the main development region of the Atlantic, uh, and then another cluster down into the Caribbean here, uh, moving towards Central America. Now, both of these areas on satellite uh, do not look uh, very impressive, but they are notable for sure. We definitely do have, uh, obviously, some convection firing up and a little bit of spin with them. And because of that, the National Hurricane Center uh, does have, uh, you know, these areas tagged as areas to watch. The Caribbean area with a 30%, excuse me, a 20% chance uh, of development over the next seven days and our area uh, into the main development region of the Atlantic moving generally towards Hispaniola. Uh, with a 40% chance of development over the next seven days. So what I will mention is both of these areas have come down in percentage uh, in percent chance of development, which obviously is good news. I know a lot of us are tired of hearing about the tropics, and I'll be honest with you, uh, there's a chance that we're done for the season. Um, November is, uh, what do we got, like two weeks away or so. Uh, it would not entirely surprise me for you know us to not get another name storm in the Atlantic. It definitely wouldn't surprise me if we don't get another landfalling name storm in the United States, uh, which we will hope for. And honestly, I'm ready to go full steam ahead into winter weather, uh, and I'm kind of done with the tropics anyway, much like you. So hopefully that is the case. Uh, we will continue to watch these areas, though, and just taking a look at some ensembles just to, you know, kind of be uh, thorough here, not just write them off. Uh, looking at the European ensembles, again, the, some of these do develop them, especially the Central American one has a little bit more support, but very weak, um, you know, really still just an open wave intensity wise. Same story for our area out here into the main development region of the Atlantic, which uh, again, just not a lot going on with either one of these. We'll take a look at the GFS ensembles as well. And you'll notice, uh, yeah, more of the same, not a whole lot going, especially for this area, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that is expected to move through Hispanic. Uh, not really expected to develop on our latest ensemble. So good downtrending. That's what you want to see. Uh, however, I will mention either way, if you're watching in Central America or Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, uh, the Northern Antilles here, uh, do expect some rain showers with these systems as they roll on through throughout the next week or so. Um, but overall speaking, uh, not really expecting storm surge or high winds or any of the other things that you would get with a tropical system. Uh, so definitely good news there. <clears throat> All right, I do apologize. I'm still fighting a little bit of congestion here. So if I kind of pause for a second and cough off to the side, then that's uh, that's my excuse. But uh, either way, uh, we'll move on and uh, take a look at the lower 48 as a whole and kind of just uh, glance at what we're seeing out here. And right now, uh, things are pretty quiet. The only real active weather, I would say, is into the Pacific Northwest as our next trough or our next storm system uh, are beginning to kind of work on through that region, uh, which we will definitely want to keep an eye on as that kind of swings again through the Rockies uh, and then eventually maybe even try to uh, cross the lower 48 as a whole. Uh, going throughout uh, the next week or so. Right now in the east, though, uh, things remain relatively quiet. We do have uh, a bit of a storm system that's going to try to get going off the North Carolina coastline this afternoon uh, as we have a little bit of a Bear Clinic zone there setting up shop, which could lead to the uh, formation of some low pressure. Uh, but again, things relatively quiet across the country. Uh, radar active watches, warnings, and advisories. Again, things remain relatively quiet, rainfall wise or snowfall wise, even. Uh, we do have this continuation of a little bit of lake effect precipitation up into the northeast. Um, 
<clears throat> excuse me, uh, that could definitely, you know, lead to some showers this, af uh, this afternoon, maybe even some snow showers into those higher elevations. Uh, again, that area to the southeast off through North Carolina, we do have precipitation showing up here. Uh, again, I am expecting low pressure to begin to develop this way. And uh, that will throw some precipitation back into uh, eastern North Carolina, specifically the Outer Banks, especially uh, having the highest chance of seeing any sort of rain out of that today. Uh, other than that, rainfall wise, uh, we do have some showers down towards the Key West area of Florida. Uh, we also have some shower activity back out west into the Rockies. And this is really where the next show is going to begin to unfold, if you will. Uh, this is where our next storm system is going to cross into the country here uh, and likely bring some active weather uh, for many folks out this way. Um, and again, we'll take a look at that here in just a second. Watches, warnings, and advisories. We do have freeze um, uh, freeze warnings in the dark blue, kind of purplish colors, and then frost advisories in the more baby blue colors on your map. So definitely watching out for that with the potential uh, of uh, damage to crops. And again, it is still early enough in the season that we do have those issued. Once we get a couple more week, uh, weeks into uh, fall and getting closer to winter, those will stop being issues issued Excuse me, as it'll be past a uh, kind of growing season. And then at that point, it's just kind of uh, known, you know, don't don't plant anything in the heart of winter. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's what we're seeing out there in terms of watches, warnings, advisories, and on radar imagery. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's take a look at the current pattern across the country, and then we'll look at the next 48 hours, and then we will dive into uh, kind of the medium and long run as well. So currently over the lower 48, kind of a couple distinct areas of troughing, uh, kind of almost really this closed off low over the Carolinas that has brought very cold air, uh, at least for this time of year. We've had temperatures well down into the 40s overnight. We had mountain snow yesterday in North Carolina. In fact, it even accumulated. Uh, we had places that got more than a dusting, even up near an inch of snow in spots, uh, which obviously, you know, was very picturesque. But unfortunately, due to what has happened recently in western North Carolina, um, you know, a lot of folks not necessarily having shelter and uh, heat to work with. Um, so, you know, praying for those folks, obviously. And uh, luckily, a lot of shelters are opened up through Western North Carolina, but still not everyone has the means to get there. Uh, so as pretty as the snow is in the cold, uh, not, uh, not necessarily what you want to see for some folks who maybe cannot handle it as well as they normally would be able to. All right. Other than that, we do have another trough going into the Pacific Northwest. Again, that's what we talked about. That's the start of our next storm system, that pocket of cold air uh, going to spin off another area of low pressure that will eventually dive down towards the Four Corners region, uh, kind of spin a little bit and then hook it out through the country. Uh, and again, that'll be the main discussion of what we're going to talk about for the medium to long run. But in between those two areas, uh, we do have this big ridge setting up shop. So while things are cold in the east right now, expecting a general a uh, gradual warming trend throughout the week ahead um, as that kind of swings on to the east and those warmer temperatures begin to take hold. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about the next 48 hours or so, and uh, we'll go ahead and back this up a little bit. So this is kind of what we're seeing out there right now this afternoon. Uh, again, a high pressure keeping things relatively dry outside of the shower activity through uh, the outer banks of North Carolina. Again, kind of this bear clinic zone between cold air over the southeast, warm air over uh, the Atlantic Ocean here. That creates a boundary. We get low pressure to form. Those uh, boundaries start moving around each other. Next thing you know, low pressure uh, and fronts are on the horizon. So just a little bit of meteorology there for you. Uh, but here we go. That kind of spins up again. Rain through the Outer Banks throughout much of today. Heavy at times this evening there through, um, you know, kind of Cape Hatteras and uh, surrounding areas. Even tries to skirt uh, portions of the Delmarva overnight tonight. But all things considered, um, <clears throat> I think going to be a pretty dry evening uh, for many of us here east of the Mississippi. Uh, and that continues into our Thursday afternoon. This low pressure rides up the coast, but it's far enough offshore. Not really anybody getting in on that rainfall. Uh, and uh, probably just some cloudy conditions, maybe a couple showers uh, Thursday evening and overnight into uh, Cape Cod, into Nantucket maybe. Uh, but again, that low pressure moving on out of here and high pressure really dominating the pattern as a whole here uh, through the rest of the work week. Temperature wise, well, this afternoon, again, well below average, we're only going to get in and around 60 through much of the southeast, even into the deep south, struggling to crack 70 as far south as Louisiana and the Florida Panhandle. 
uh, down into the 40s through the higher terrains of Appalachia from North Carolina up through West Virginia. Uh, up into the northeast, those higher terrains might struggle to even hit 40 this afternoon as uh, kind of some lingering snow flurries from that lake effect precipitation continue. Uh, but again, just overall a chilly uh, middle of October day here. Uh, and that will translate into cold evenings as well. So we'll get into overnight tonight and into our Thursday morning. Uh, look at some of these temperatures. I mean, we're showing 30s down as far south as upstate South Carolina. Uh, Piedmont of both Carolinas down into North Georgia. I wouldn't be surprised to, again, see some frost overnight tonight as we do have those frost advisories in place. Uh, but overall, just a very chilly night. Uh, you're going to want to wear a jacket tomorrow morning. In fact, it might be the first day you wear your blue jeans of the year, uh, if you didn't already this morning, that is, uh, down here through portions of the Mid-South. So again, definitely uh, getting to that time of year. Things are changing, as you would expect. Uh, and then uh, we kind of rebound pretty nicely into Thursday afternoon, probably a degree or two warmer than we are today. Uh, and then Thursday evening into Friday morning, another chilly night, similar to the night before, maybe a degree or two warmer uh, from that as well. So uh, again, just a nice chilly fall air mass in place for a lot of folks, and it's going to make it feel a lot like fall over the next couple of days. <clears throat> All right, out west, what's going on? Well, again, it's all about this storm system that I've been mentioning. Uh, here comes that rainfall throughout the day today into overnight, and you'll notice kind of this general plume of moisture is going to really affect everybody in the Rockies and through the West Coast. Uh, just about everyone having a shot at some rain out of this. Uh, this is this evening. Again, you'll notice very convective showers and snow showers moving in off the uh, Pacific Northwest coast into the um, portions of the Pacific Northwest through Washington, Oregon, Idaho. Uh, heavy mountain snow, uh, convective showers here through the valleys could bring some even rumbles of thunder. Would not be surprised uh, to see that. And uh, it continues through overnight tonight, even into our Thursday morning. Notice the snow really picking up through the higher terrains of the northern Rockies, even the southern Rockies. You folks down here in Colorado going to get plenty of snow out of this as well. This is Thursday morning. Uh, you'll notice... Uh, again, snow falling in the higher terrains, uh, rain into the valleys and into the lower terrains. Uh, and at this point, by the time we get to Thursday afternoon, you'll notice low pressure beginning to develop here. Uh, widespread precipitation picking up through much of the Rockies from the northern Rockies all the way down through the southern Rockies. Uh, and that continues as this low pressure continues uh, to strengthen here. And by the time we get to Friday uh, morning here, widespread heavy mountain snow. Again, this is going to accumulate big time. This is really going to jumpstart ski season here uh, as we see that nice uh, fluffy snow begin to pile up here into the higher terrains of the Rockies. Uh, temperature wise this afternoon, well, I mean, you know, it's going to be a mixed bag depending on where you are down into the desert southwest of Arizona and Southern California through Death Valley. Yeah, it's going to be hot up into the 90s, uh, into the Pacific Northwest, uh, cooler as that cool air begins to funnel in, excuse me, funnel in. And you can kind of even see where this front is setting up shop. This is this afternoon. Uh, we'll move this ahead in time. Uh, if, uh, if the map moves, we'll see, might have to click a different button here. Uh, we'll move this ahead into time. There we go. Uh, you'll notice obviously overnight tonight, things cool down pretty considerably. Uh, so again, kind of what you would expect this time of year, depending on where you're at, freezing temperatures into the higher terrains, not so freezing into the lower terrains, although either way, big diurnal swings as you normally get out West. Uh, but by tomorrow afternoon, again, here's that front continuing to march through. Here's overnight Thursday and by Friday morning, uh, well below average temperatures, widespread sub-freezing temperatures out west, uh, outside of uh, you know the uh, deserts themselves. So uh, definitely, definitely a cool down on the way this way as that low pressure uh, begins to fire up and that cold air works on through. All right, let's time this out through the week ahead a little bit. Here we go. This is Friday, and we'll move this into Saturday morning, and you'll notice how the pattern kind of shifts. This kind of cutoff low begins to dive down south towards the Four Corners region. Uh, again, this is going to bring a lot of mountain snow and the potential for severe weather going into this weekend. At the same time that is happening, uh, a big ridge begins to flex its muscles out towards the east, uh, and we do see uh, those warmer temperatures beginning to return uh, to the pattern here east of the Mississippi, uh, which is something that you would generally kind of expect here uh, with this, uh, you know, kind of uh, flexing of the ridge. Obviously, warmer temperatures is something uh, that would come with that. 
Now we move this further ahead into time and that ridge in the east really kind of just takes hold. Uh, at the same time though, our low pressure gets stuck a little bit, but then finally gets pushed out towards uh, the Great Plains by Monday and then through next week, tries to swing on through uh, the Ohio River Valley and eventually through the northeast, where at that point, about a week from now, a zonal flow really takes back over uh, and we get into a more kind of mild average-like pattern here through much of the country. All right, so what could this look like on radar? Well, here we go. Move this ahead into time, kind of picking up where we left off. This is getting into Friday afternoon. Again, a heavy mountain snow through the Rockies. Uh, everywhere east of there, not really much happening. That's quite dry. It's still chilly, uh, getting closer to average, but still below average by Friday afternoon. Uh, and uh, again, that low pressure is just the big story. Spins away over the four corners a little bit, again, bringing heavy mountain snow and eventually uh, gets pushed out over the plains here by Monday, could bring some precipitation there, uh, but then really just kind of weakens pretty significantly and dies out as it tries to cross the country. Uh, and then, you know, maybe in the long run, another storm system or two try to fire up, but that's far enough out that we just uh, really don't know uh, what's going to happen from that point on. But what I will say is, again, <clears throat> excuse me, some uh, very heavy mountain snow will be a story here, especially down through southern Colorado, potentially could be counting snowfall totals in feet uh, here through portions, again, uh, of the southern Rockies and through the state of Colorado, back through Utah, heavy snow, Wyoming going to get some heavy snow out of this, southern Montana's mountains, uh, again, really just a whole lot of snow for a whole lot of folks here into the higher terrains of the Rockies, and like I said, that's really going to help to kind of jumpstart ski season a little bit here uh, as we go through the next week or so. Now, there is also uh, the threat of some severe weather with this, uh, as we do get with uh, kind of these low pressures digging this far south. Uh, and you'll notice by the time we get a Saturday afternoon, the uh, ingredients for severe weather do increase here through uh, kind of West Texas and Eastern New Mexico. Again, this is Saturday afternoon and evening, stays around for Sunday, even expands northward a little bit through the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle uh, and up through Western Kansas there. Uh, and then those ingredients kind of die down a little bit as we go later on into next week. But severe weather uh, is something we will need to watch out for throughout the next seven uh, days or so. <clears throat> All right, temperature wise, well, again, it's going to stay chilly through the east for the next little bit. This is Thursday afternoon, below average temperatures, Friday afternoon, below average temperatures. But by the time we get to, we'll move this into Saturday afternoon, you'll notice that ridge begins to get felt a little bit more and above average temperatures. Uh, once again, working back into the forecast here through the Ohio River Valley northbound, uh, even into eastern Canada, while we're dealing with below average temperatures into the Rockies as that upper level low brings some of those cooler temperatures. Um, and that above average uh, temperature uh, kind of map will stay a theme through next week. You'll notice uh, above average temperatures become pretty prevalent through really the entire country through the next seven to 10 days uh, as that zonal flow picks back up and things once again calm down. Now, one thing I am concerned about here is a lack of rainfall uh, through portions of the east from the Ohio, the Tennessee River Valley, uh, back down even into the Carolinas, Virginia, up through the northeast. Uh, you'll notice this is the next 10 days, not really any rain expected. So uh, we will need to watch for drought conditions to worsen and for the potential of wildfires to uh, kind of flare up here. I can tell you October, November is generally wildfire season through the Appalachia chain. Uh, and this year may be no different as we go a while here without uh, any sort of appreciable rainfall while kind of the West takes all of that rain from us, if you will. Uh, so definitely need to watch that. Also, we've got a ton of leaves and uh, branches down due to Helene through much of the Southeast. Um, so we've got plenty of dry brush on the ground. Again, Helene at this point uh, will be about a month ago by the time we get 10 days from now. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's definitely the rain we got from Helene is well gone and these soils are beginning to dry up pretty quickly. Uh, so we will absolutely need to watch for that here in the long run. Alrighty, folks. Well, again, that's all I got for you on this Wednesday. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to get around to answering those. With that said though, have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. Stay safe out there and I'll see you all tomorrow.